all, what this building has to do is not to kind of think, oh, aren't we great, we've got a northern design centre. We've got to think that actually we've got to use this to actually keep ahead or to try, and well, not even keep ahead, to keep up with some of the thinking that's going on around the world. This has got to be a hotbed of absolute, how the hell are we go are going to make sure that, well, at the moment we're ahead of the Chinese and, 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 and the developing countries in terms of design. That's why so many people around the world send, send, their, send their young people to study at the great colleges here and the, around the rest of Britain. But they are desperate to get to where we are in terms of creativity and design. And in Europe, they're going at, at a faster pace and we must, we must keep, keep seeing what they're doing. This is an example, this is the best housing development, I think, the best, no, sorry, the best new place being built in Europe at the moment, it's called Eiberg, uh, and it's a new island that they've built, um, 10 minute cycle from uh, Central Station in Amsterdam, so it's 80,000 people are going to live there, so it's a pretty major inner, inner suburb of Amsterdam that's been built from nothing, completely sc scratched, it's been dug out of the, the, the sea there, and, and the sand has been piled up. Uh, and they started to let, to, to do an am some amazing housing where people get involved, they design their own housing, they build it individually, and 80,000 is a big, you know, obviously a lot of people. Uh, and it looks like this, and it looks, some, some looks less, less rich than this, and there's all sorts of stuff. But the first thing that they built, the first thing, because what they knew that they had to do was to attract a creative community. A creative community is one that sings. If you, if you, if you, we know, we know from the 60s, if you, if you build something that is, um, just attracts, people of low aspiration, the place ends up low aspiration. So what they, what they, if you look at the first, they wanted to, they wanted to attract a design-led community to, to, to live there. And the first thing that they built from day one was a beach. Uh, and this is what they said, this is what you're going to have if you come, come and live here. And so the importance of beaches and things like that, anyway, that's enough of that. I th I'd urge you all to, to read a book that came out. Has anybody seen the book, The Spirit Level by Wilkinson and Pickett? Uh, every designer, every, uh, I believe that every designer and every single um, manufacturer should, should, read, should read that book. What it's proved is that if, um, for the first time ever, you know, we've got a very unequal society here uh, in Britain, you know, Britain and America, who are suffering as bad as anybody in the recession and, and possibly worse than most, have got the most unequal societies outside of India. You know, we, that's the gap between, between rich and poor. Um, the, 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 the least unequal are the Scandinavian countries, Japan, Switzerland. There's, we have got the highest, we, in this country, uh, and we've got the highest teenage pregnancies, the highest mental health problems, the highest alcohol, alcoholism, and in, a, in, a, in the um, UNICEF study of child well-being of developed countries, we came bottom totally and utterly bottom uh, of, of, de of developed countries. And I, I, I thought until I read this book, I said, I, I can understand why we come bottom of all of those, because there are a lot of poor people who are disenfranchised. And, uh, and then this book came out, and without a shadow of a doubt, I, I think it will change politics. I, I really think over the next, over the next year, this book will change politics, because it's, it's well thought out, but more than that, it's not some, it's not conjecture, it's figures that prove that when you, the more unequal the society, the more unhappy the wealthy are. That there's more mental health problems, more, or more all sorts of problems in the way, it's not just the poor that have it, the wealthy get hit just as hard. And all those things that, w that I thought were just, oh well it's those poor people and you think what we're going to do about it, but at least I'm alright. It's not that way. And this book, I've read it, I've read it again, I know lots of other people have read it, and it's unequivocally correct. Please, please read it. And the way we're going to solve it is by redesigning society. Uh, simple as that. We're going to have to redesign so much. Um, but luckily, the world is moving, is moving that way, and so many people are moving that way. If I had stood up, in fr up here, maybe not in front of you lot, but in front of most people, ten years ago, and said that everything that I source, I try and make it fair trade or ethical, um, I think people would have thought, bloody hippie. Uh, but now people think, well, he's probably right. If I'd have said that I take my kid, that I've always taken my kids on world anti-world trade organisation marches, that we we marched against Iraq, that we did all that kind of stuff, rather than sometimes missing their football on a Sunday, that this, these things are pretty important, kids. I know you may not understand it now. People would have thought, political idiot. You know, he's, a, he's, he's just a troublemaker. 
But now you might, when, you know, that, those, those marches were against greed, and people might think, well, maybe, maybe those people had a point. I think one of the things that really brought it home to me recently about how design thinking is changing and, and how designers are leading it was I, I was in uh, New York and I walked into a pretty swanky boutique with one of my daughters uh, and she, 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 she said, oh, these are a cool pair of jeans. So they might be, but they're $400 and I'm not buying them and you haven't, and you haven't got that much. Um, and it had, it had the word Florence and Fred on it. Now Florence and Fred, for those that don't know, is the, the jeans, the jeans that Tesco sell for eight quid, I think, eight or nine quid, is it? And these were four hundred dollars, and I looked at them, and they'd been customised with beading and, and sewing on it, and they were nice, it was really well done. And it had this label in it saying, part of the Trashen movement. So, I think what it was, so wrote it down, went on the internet back at the hotel, looked it up. Trashen's this movement, and I've been researching it. It's, it's I, I, it resonates with me, because we started, when we started Red or Dead back in 1980, we started off selling second-hand clothes, and Jeremy and my wife customising them and all that. But, but um, I, I started to trace what Trashen was about, and um, and, and, and realised that it, it was quite a bit, a, well, a pretty big movement. And what it is is that you know when we when we've worn our clothes, we put them. If you either you either if you're an idiot, you put them in the bin. If you're sustainable, um, you take them to a charity shop or you put them in uh, you put them in one of those recycling points outside one of the supermarkets, one of those big metal containers. But they get collected and mostly they get shipped to Africa. Uh, nowadays, they used to, it used to be recycled, but now they go to, mainly go to Africa. Uh, the charities get hold of them, send them to Africa. They go to Africa because it's cheaper for the Africans to dress that way than make their own clothes and make their own fabric. Somebody had written on, on about this trashing, but they thought that that was wrong. That actually the, the, the Africans would be losing their skills by by doing that, and and maybe that maybe there was another way. So this guy had worked out that well, these clothes can get shipped shipped to Africa, and this picture's from Sierra Leone get shipped to Africa, let, let the women who've got the skills of sewing there do, do their, their beading, their, their sewing, whatever, whatever you know, the, the national identity was, and, and then guide them through that process, uh, and then sell it back in America. Um, and it's worked. What's, what's more than that is that these, that, 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 these, um, that these women now get roughly the same price per piece than Tesco sold that product to us. How fantastic is that? And this is a way that, you know, design thinking, creative thinking can turn everything on its head. And that might be like that much on, on the scale of a world economy. But it, it's, this kind of thinking is going to power on and power on and power on. Um, you only have to look at how, how things change and how thinking changes. If you look again back, I don't know, when was Swampy around? When, when, did, we, when did Swampy start to... And when I said Swampy, I, I, there was a, a little gentle murmur of smiles. So, uh, you could think about this funny little guy digging himself in tunnels underneath roads, climbing up trees and stopping things happening. And he used to be used, did Swampy, as an and finally piece on the news. Uh, you know, a, a news at 10 would come on and they'd, oh, and Swampy's down, at, and, and Trevor McDonough would come on and, and Swampy's down his tunnel again and somebody would do some funny interview and we'd all smile about it. We don't actually smile now when, uh, when plain stupid come on second on the news, not maybe even first on the news, and when Greenpeace come on, because they've done the most amazing thing and bought the land that the third runway at Heathrow was supposed to be built on. And in the knowledge that probably it's kind of, it might just prove a little too problematical for any, um, certainly this government at the moment, I don't think they would dare to actually have a go at, at, at buying that land or compulsory purchasing the Greenpeace land to do it and I don't think Cameron has got the guts to do it either. So just just maybe uh, simple little things like plain stupid and, uh, and Greenpeace now um, can, actually change, can actually change society and, and, and be sure that, 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 the people, that the main people who support all of that are design aware. They're not people who just don't give a toss about design, they are totally and utterly design aware people with the same brains that people who are qualified as designers have and, and, the, pe and, and the people who love design. The world is changing politically and, that, and part of that is the design change.